Hi, I'm Lewis Myers, and I'm a Democratic candidate for Congress in Vermont. Wanted to have this opportunity on PEG TV to talk with you about uh, what I'm involved in and, and why I'm running. Uh, I am a uh, hospital physician at Rutland Regional Medical Center. I've been there for nine years, working as one of the hospital doctors. I began medical practice as a primary care provider uh, physician and was, did that for over 16 years. So I've had a long time, a lot of experience in healthcare. I love working at Rutland Regional Medical Center and I wanted to talk, talk to you for a minute about that because I think it reflects what is so, some of the best of what we have in healthcare. Rutland Regional works from the top down or bottom up. It's an independent regional hospital which has terrific doctors, terrific nurses, uh, everyone including the housekeepers and the people who work in the cafeteria are dedicated, hardworking, and are there to serve the patients. Uh, perhaps it begins with our CEO, Claudio Ford, who sets some of that uh, same uh, uh, energy and dedication. This is different than what's happening across the country and indeed across Vermont, as we see large institutional corporate entities take over health care, and that's been going on for some 30 years. Uh, they uh, enfold hospitals like Rutland into their network and then jack their prices up two to three times and uh, becomes very impersonal. So I am just so glad that we've remained independent Rutland and I'll fight uh, to the last breath to uh, try and keep it that way. As a uh, congressman, uh, we look at more national levels, uh, national issues, and I think on a national level, I would like to do everything I can to support independent hospitals, independent medical practices. Uh, that also includes nursing homes. The uh, private equity companies across the country, these big for-profit companies have been taking over nursing homes, now own over a third of them. And what we've seen, especially during COVID, is when they take over a nursing home, they cut the staffing and the uh, quality of, of care goes down and the mortality goes up. So people died much more frequently during COVID in, in equity-owned uh, nursing homes. Um, so we have a lot of work still to do in healthcare in the United States. And there are many other issues that I'm obviously interested in. These include education. Uh, uh, I think people are very concerned now about the school systems, what they're teaching, how it's being taught, and of course, the potential for violence in schools, which is all too real. Uh, speaking of violence, we, uh, we see a wave of uh, violence across our country and our cities and even some of the rural areas. And the criminal justice system needs a lot of work. And as a former probation officer, which I uh, worked at for several years prior to going into uh, medicine, uh, I have some familiarity with the criminal justice system and would like to make it more fair, but also uh, so everybody knows, criminals included, that there will be consequences and uh, well-defined consequences for their actions. Guns obviously are a big part of uh, what's happening in the, in the crime, current crime wave we're seeing and, and now and in the past. Um, the uh, Supreme Court has uh, perhaps made it more difficult uh, for police on the streets to, to apprehend people who should not have guns because now everyone is legally entitled to walk around with guns. Uh, but um, the, uh, one of the things I would advocate for is a minimum, mandatory minimum sentence for any crime that's committed with a gun, uh, probably in the range of five years. Uh, and I think that could receive some bipartisan support. Republicans, of course, believe that uh, it's not guns that hurt people, it's bad people that hurt people. And certainly if that's the case, then making it clear that any crime committed with a gun is going to be punishable uh, would, would fit in with uh, perhaps both Democrat and Republican views. Other major issues, of course, uh, include the environment uh, and, and climate change. Um, and I do differ from some of the other candidates, in, uh, my fellow candidates in this congressional race, in that I'm the only one, perhaps, who uh, supports including nuclear power in the range of options that we need to keep active in this country. We now receive approximately 30% of our energy from nuclear power, and it is a, uh, essentially a clean power. It does not uh, produce any carbon emissions. Uh, and, uh, I think that if we eliminate it, we're going to have to go back to more fossil fuels and coal. Let me get back to talking about Rutland. I've talked about Rutland uh, 
uh, regional medical center, but uh, perhaps it's also reflective of its community itself. I've taken care of thousands of patients at Rutland Regional over the past nine plus years that I've been there. Many of them, of course, are older. Uh, they remember a Rutland from 50 or 60, in some cases 70 years ago, and the descriptions that I hear from them are of what was then an absolutely thriving community. Uh, population was bigger than it is now. There were more stores. There, the economy was thriving. Um, Rutland has always been a hard-working town, uh, and it still is. I know so many people now who are working hard, uh, sometimes two jobs or more just to get by. Uh, Rutland has always been about raising families uh, and community. There's a heavy uh, involvement with church and, and uh, uh, here in Rutland as well. But obviously Rutland has had its struggles. I think 60 or 70 years ago we certainly didn't have the problems we have with uh, narcotic or opioids and probably not as much involvement with alcoholism. Uh, and just uh, the overall economy was better. I think Rutland can come can rise again. And I think towns across Vermont can rise again. Obviously, some of that, a lot of that has to do with our state and local officials, but our lone congressman in Vermont has a big responsibility to try and identify those regions in Vermont that most need help and target some of the earmarked money that is now available through the federal uh, monies in Congress to, to help those communities. Um, and I uh, absolutely promise to do that. And of course, Rutland is near and dear to my heart. So I am uh, running for Congress in the Democratic primary. Uh, I encourage everyone to vote. I, uh, there is, of course, six weeks of early voting, which has already begun. You just need to contact your town clerk, and they'll send you a, a mail-in ballot. You can send it in, and your vote will count just as much as if you go to the polls on August 9th. I will go to the polls August 9th because uh, since I turned 21, or 18, actually, um, I have voted in every election. Uh, and uh, always feel that that's a, such an important part of being a citizen of this country. And, and uh, it's sort of exciting to go to the polls. It will be even more exciting this year because I, I think I know who I'm voting for. So I encourage you to vote, and thank you so much.